Hello, I am Sam Holiday, and my theme was on the art of war. Now, my interest for this topic was that it was something we can relate to current times. So with all of the things that are going on in the world right now, we're closer than ever to World War III. Hopefully that doesn't happen, but you can see the relation to these pieces and looking at how war can affect people along with how war can affect and change the world that we live in and everything else around it and also how art can be used as a coping mechanism and you'll see that throughout these pieces now moving forward into my topic i wanted to think about these questions which was how do these pieces reflect the times how do these pieces show pain and suffering what is the role of the artist and how did it affect the artist and or their work? And what was the emotion that was trying to be conveyed and does the materials and aesthetics help? Now, the first artist I had on my list was David Olivier. He was a Polish-born French painter and sculptor who was best known for his explicit drawings and paintings based on his experiences as a Jewish inmate at the Auschwitz concentration camps during World War II. This made him a survivor of the Holocaust, and it had a significant impact on the majority of his works. So the piece that I chose for Olivier was the piece called Gassing, and this was a reflection of the times because it showed us exactly what was happening inside the gassing chambers and during World War II. And there was no cameras to document what was happening on the inside, so this gives us a first-hand observation from someone who was there. We can see that there is pain and suffering throughout the entirety of the piece, with the overcrowded composition and the elongated figures that are malnourished and crammed together, screaming and cradling their loved ones as toxic fumes fill the room. I believe that Olivier's position as an inmate during this time gave him an advantage that no one else has. With him being there firsthand, it gave him a personal connection and it gave him the ability to project those memories that haunt his mind. Living in fear every day and being forced to watch these terrible and cruel acts happen every day in and out and forced to remove the bodies afterward largely impacted the, the way that he was able to convey the fear in this piece. I believe that the aesthetics of the piece uh, play a large role with it having a warm but cold feeling as if the, the life is being drained from the piece plays a significant part in helping portray that. Along with the way that he portrays the gas of filling the room and the ghost-like figures, and the way that he extended and elongated the figures and extremely accentuated their skeletal figure, along with the overcrowded composition. The next artist that I had was John Singer Sargent. He was an American ex uh, expatriate artist uh, who was born in Florence, Italy to American parents. And he was considered one of the leading portrait painters of his generation. His father was a military leader and a jurist, and he had hopes that John would follow in his footsteps, but instead he went on to study it to be an artist. And later on, he was commissioned by the British uh, government to, to uh, make this piece called Gassed. It was a memorial piece and it depicts wounded soldiers on their way to a dressing station. This was one of the first real depictions uh, of mustard gas being used in World War I, which helps us see the reflection of the time. We can see pain and suffering all around because we can see wounded soldiers all, all over the ground, uh, all along the path, in the background, all walking together down the main path and, and even a line of them walking in the or in the background towards the station they're they're blindfolded helping each other guide each other along i believe that with john's connection to the military through his dad and also the fact that he saw this event firsthand it impacted his work greatly um because whenever he went to make a visit that way he could you know kind of get a feel for what he was going for in this commission it changed his his idea the commission originally was going to be about a tank because that was the greatest newest thing at the time um and he initially after seeing this attack mustard gas on the soldiers and them on their way to the dressing station he changed his mind did a drawing and submitted it and they actually approved the changes for the commission this piece gives the emotion of pain, exhaustion, but it also gives hope and relief. I say this because even with everything going on, 
they're soldiers that are returning and they're seeking help and it's not just sad it's also something that can be looked upon as hope which in a memorial piece would be important another thing that is a key factor in this was that the piece itself was large ginormous and the reason for this is because where it was a memorial piece it needed to be big so that way it had a larger impact the last artist on my list was Harvey Dune. He was an illustration artist and a teacher turned into a soldier. And he was chosen to become an artist for the American Expeditionary Forces, which was a group of artists or uh, soldiers that were sent into battle to record the gruesome realities of the war to use for propaganda and recruitment and historical purposes. Dune was one of the first to return from Europe, but he continued to paint pictures based on his experiences for many years after. The piece that I chose for Dune was the piece called On the Wire. This was a reflection of the times because it gives us a scene of what it was like to be a soldier living during World War I and how they would remove the bodies from the battlefield. We can see pain and suffering throughout the piece with the, the depiction of the soldiers tirelessly walking along a barbed wire fence carrying a stretcher with a wounded soldier on it, unknowingly if he is alive or dead. We can see that they're wearing gas masks and that there is clearly gas in the air. I believe that with his background as an illustrator and a teacher, it helped gave him an ability to not only paint a image to help depict everyday life as a soldier, and to document these things for the group, but also the ability to tell a story and for it to have a, a, a meaning or a purpose. And being a part of an American soldier artist group and to depict and document what was going on during these times gave it him significant insight to the everyday lives of soldiers. I believe that the brushstrokes in this piece will play a large role in the sketchiness between the life and death scenario of the wounded of the wounded soldier on the stretcher. I also believe that he composed the piece to have a light side and a dark side. The left side being a little brighter as they are walking in that direction and the right side being darker where they're coming from a battle. And this kind of gives you the feeling that there's hope in the piece, along with the use of flowers in the bottom. And that sense of life always seems to be a symbol. In conclusion, after viewing the artists, their roles, and their artwork, we can see that all three had different roles and had different experiences, but they were all connected by the same thing, pain and suffering that came with war. A few of the pieces showed us hope, but... The main point here was the pain and suffering that comes with war and how it can change a person and their view on life. For Olivier, there was no hope of surviving. In fact, it was a miracle that he did. For Sargent, it was a commission that led to seeing one of the first times mustard gas was used to attack soldiers. And for Dune, it was the typical everyday lifestyle of a soldier removing the wounded and the dead from the battlefield. But all of these artists use art to convey their message and to share these experiences with like-minded people and to open the eyes of their viewers, making it where we can look back on past times and see how they can relate to current times and just how that affects everyone around us.